Good news, good news, good news. The SEC finally comes out and approves a exchange to trade crypto and digital assets. We'll take a look at what that exchange actually is. And also we'll take a look at some more good news as Apple finally approves NFT sales on its platform and a couple other pieces of information. So these are the days that I like to uh, report on the news because it gives everybody uh, a little bit of uh, a little bit of a push, a little bit of hope. And uh, that is a good thing. So the first thing we have today is this was an article by uh, Coindesk, and it talks about come in and register. These firms say they actually found an SEC-friendly crypto path. Now, if you haven't followed uh, what's going on with crypto lately, the SEC has not been uh, very forthcoming and very uh, giving as to what they want to do as far as when exchanges come in and try to register with the SEC to try to trade securities. Coinbase has done this. And of course, what happened with them? They met with them multiple times and they got hit with a Wells notice. And now it looks like the SEC is changing course just a little bit. And before I get in the article, it was interesting that I had talked to, to Simon Dixon and we did this in February. And he talked about how when he did it uh, through his bank, the future, as he was trying to start up uh, his own bank and how it was to register and register for securities. He says, actually, the way that these crypto exchanges are doing it is they're doing it in, in, in a wrong way. And the way that they're doing it doesn't really lend itself to being compliant with the SEC. He also said the SEC is also not bearing, being very forthcoming. So he said, it's not just on this one side of the exchanges. It's actually both people who are being uh, a little bit uh, uh, non-compliant with what they're trying to do. So I always thought about that, that comment that he said, and now it's starting to make a little bit of sense, but you'll get to it. So here's what we got. The SEC quietly issues significant approvals for companies trying to stick to the securities rule book. The FINRA, a financial industry regulatory authority, industry funded oversight arm created by the SEC, announced that it approved its first broker dealer with custody rights for digital asset securities. That was done today. This is through Prometheum Ember Capital LLC. Aaron Kaplan, who is a security lawyer, is the founder and co-CEO of parent co company Prometheum. He said the firm will demonstrate that industry compliance or complaints about the absence of a path to US compliance are totally mistaken. He says those complaining about a lack of regulatory clarity, Coinbase and others, were trying to put a square peg into a circular hole. Prometheum Capital has only been approved as a special purpose broker dealer that can take custody of customers' crypto assets effective uh, May 17th, which is uh, retroactively, but also as an alternative trading system or an ATX, ATS for digital asset securities. The company's platform will go live in the third quarter. So again, when we talk about this, it looks like this platform is going to allow exchanges of crypto and digital assets, whether that be a security or potentially a commodity or somewhere in the middle. So when it ends up like this, Kaplan, who wouldn't yet identify which securities he anticipates will change hands on his firm's exchange, contends that his platform will be able to handle the many digital assets that have sought exemptions from certain securities requirements. Unlike a full-fledged exchange, an ATS doesn't work with a company to list a security but it only really links buyers and sellers to trade assets that Prometheum Capital's compliance operation decide meets the definition of security. So again, they're going to allow trading of crypto and digital assets. I think this is a step in the right direction. So the, the big question is, is what's going on with Coinbase? Now it's a little bit of a, a different as far as like the, the nuance behind it, but at least it gives us a little bit of hope that there is a little bit of a, a way to meet in the middle. And yeah, let me just think about that in the comments section and also more good news, Apple and NFTs. This is from an app called Steppen. And the issue with Apple is that they don't like to deal anything with, with crypto or digital assets or anything in between, especially uh, with NFTs. And the big thing is uh, the fees that they have to charge for that. So now it looks like Steppen, uh, which is a move to earn app, got a, around that in a certain way. Here's what we got. So let's scroll down here. So here's, here's how it's gonna work, is that, let me scroll up here. Apple and Google, just so you know, they charge a 30% fee on most in-app purchases. So everything that, that you put on Apple or Android, they're going to charge you immediately 30%. That 
that's a bummer, but that's what it is. I thought that was just uh, Apple, but uh, maybe Google does. I don't believe Google does. That might be incorrect. That includes NFTs, which means app developers will either need to charge users that extra fee or otherwise eat the fee as part of the cost of doing business. So a lot of places, what they'll do is they'll say, okay, this is $10 out in the real world. Uh, now, because of Apple, it's going to be $13. What we'll do is uh, we'll charge, you know, uh, $8 and, uh, you know, we'll, uh, increase that at cost to meet around that, that $10 fee and we'll eat the fee. However, what Stepan did is the exact opposite. They said, if you want to buy this NFT uh, on the Apple store, what you're going to do is uh, you're going to pay for that. <laughs> so here's an example. A pair of sneakers was listed for 110 GMT, uh, which was about $31.40 uh, based on the price of the token uh, for Stepan. And then if you want to do that on the Apple store, it was actually $44.60. So uh, you could pay, you could pay $31.40 outside, or if you just didn't really want to deal with it and wanted to go through Apple, it's $44. That's like a 43% difference or 42, 43% increase. So there is a way around it. I just thought it was interesting that Stefan's like, well, if you guys want to buy it and you want to go that route, then you can do it just that so we're going to charge you. And it's actually going to be Apple. We're not going to eat that cost. So I think, again, it's, it's positive. I don't agree with them doing that, but maybe I missed something. Let me know in the comments. Also, more good news, uh, tokenized securities. Uh, looks like they hit a $225 million market cap. Now, this is something that you've heard uh, people from uh, uh, BlackRock talk about, how the future is going to be tokenized securities. So they're going to be able to uh, tokenize stocks instead of stocks sitting in some brokerage. You're going to be able to own the tokenized version of those stocks. And uh, it's been ending up on Ethereum Polygon Gnosis. It's a $225 million market. Now, this was uh, written uh, yesterday. And if you take a look here, there's a website called dune.com uh, for tokenized securities. I will link this in the description. You can see that actually uh, today, for Daily Global, it's 189 million. So it's still doing pretty good, 12% growth. And here's the market cap as far as issuers. Ondo, Matrix Doc, backed Open Edge, Franklin Templeton, which I was kind of surprised to see. That is an old school uh, financial institution. Uh, they're getting into bet, but uh, it looks like this is actually going off without a hitch. There is one thing to note here, though. And I thought this was interesting that the, the company I mentioned, Franklin Templeton, the old school finance, they used Polygon, which I thought was a pretty smart way to do things. They tapped Polygon to host a tokenized version of its NASDAQ listed on chain US government money fund. However, just so you know, the majority of the activity is occurring on Ethereum. I don't know why that is. I mean, if you're a trader, I mean, do you really want to trade with those fees on Ethereum? Why would they just use Polygon? But again, step in the right direction. I like that. Also, some good news, some not so great news. Ledger, uh, they just had their um, Twitter spaces and they came out and said that they are going to hold off on the recovery option. If you haven't heard so far, Ledger just rolled out an option where they would be able to store your uh, private keys. And it was $10 a month if you wanted to do so. And of course, they would back it up. This is, I think, I thought it was a terrible idea because uh, that's the whole ethos of crypto is to be able to give you control and you power and you to keep it. But Sure, I understand where they're coming from. If you want to onboard some more people, maybe a lot more people, they don't want to deal with it because they're not used to it. I think they can get used to it, but that's not for me to decide. I'm not anybody's dad. If you want to pay for that service and give somebody else control, so go right ahead. I don't care. But for this one, they said, yeah, we've heard the complaints. We know what's going on. So we're going to uh, roll back the firmware upgrade. We're going to not go through with the recovery option right now, and we're going to make our code open source. Now in the past, they made a couple couple different parts of their process open source, but now they wanna go through the whole thing and give the option for everybody to take a look at their code. Now here's the thing. I don't know if you know this, but I'm not a developer. So if they roll it out in open code, I have no way to, to know what it, what's going on. Uh, if they do, and there's some information that uh, some of the analysts can take a look at, so much the better, great, I'll report it. But I think this is good in the long run. Maybe people can look at it and go, oh, there's a problem here, there's a problem there. I'll report on it. But for me personally, maybe you out there, maybe this isn't a such, a, such a big deal. So we'll see how it is. I am going to have Ledger on the show. Today is Tuesday. They will be here Thursday. So I'll ask them some questions. One of the big questions I'd like to know personally 
is if you're going to do this, because it, it, let's be honest, they're going to do it at some point. It's a it's a revenue stream they're going to they're going to tackle ten dollars extra a month from the plebs. If you can do that, why don't you just put that onto a different device and just let the people that are here right now and know what they're doing just to keep it the same way, keep it a different device for different people and they can have the firmware upgrade and they can back it all up and we don't have to deal with it. I understand the whole process that it doesn't go through unless you opt in and unless you give your consent and unless you start paying for it, but it would just be nice if they could just separate it totally and everybody can feel safe. Anyhow, if you've got questions for them, link in the description. I'll ask them out of the best of my abilities. And lastly, just to finish up, some bad news and some, I think some really good news. First of all, you may have noticed there was a little bit of dip yesterday. Apparently there was an AI generated hoax of a Pentagon explosion. This was making the rounds, uh, being tweeted and retweet that there was a report of an explosion in the Pentagon in Washington, DC. And this was by some pretty big names and they would put it out. And then later on they go, whoops, sorry, that was AI. And just so you know, when that happened, uh, as far as like the dip that it was, U.S. stock took a little bit of hits, and then uh, Bitcoin went down to 26.5. I think it rebounded to 27.8, somewhere around there. So if you were catching falling knives in a trader, congratulations. You probably got a good deal. But this is a problem, and it's going to be a bigger problem as we come into the season of a new presidential election in 2004 and everything else that's going on. I would highly recommend, if you haven't done so, subscribe to a channel that you like to get information from instead of hopefully not getting too much AI-generated nonsense like this. And then lastly, I think this is pretty good. I think we're in the right place at the right time. I think that the four-year cycle is still intact, and this is from Will Clemente. And just to kind of give you a feeling of like where we're going, he says one of the biggest difference in, differences between this Bitcoin bear market and the last one is that in 2019, hash rates didn't reach new highs until Bitcoin 3 x off its lows, which if you don't remember, 2017, we hit 20,000, 2018, 19, like 3,000, 3,500, 5,000, somewhere around there. And people just kind of was, were writing off Bitcoin. But now I think people don't do that so much. So today, the hash rate is over 2x. It's prior May 2021 high, uh, but Bitcoin's only up 75% off its lows and hasn't even nearly 3x. So what this means to me is that companies and miners and investors start to see that they, maybe this thing that they call Bitcoin and crypto digital assets would be something to get into. And you'll see more people putting money into the mining operation. And uh, I think it actually is a good thing moving forward, but that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, Give it a thumbs up. That helps a lot. Also consider subscribing like we just talked about. Don't get a bunch of nonsense information. Just pick someone that you trust and subscribe to them because this is not a set and forget it type of market. But that's it for today. So thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.